Every Brown. Amen. And we're glad to be able to be with you and to be able to highlight your story because I think when people hear the journey that God has taken you through, that uh, they'll be encouraged and see that there is hope no matter where their situation is and where they're starting from, that, that God gives hope and he gives victory and he gives deliverance because you kind of experience all of that. So Amen. it's good to be with you. Thank you, Dr. Evans. This has been a lifelong journey. I've been a um, uh, stronghold bound for 38 years. 38 years? 38 years. I, I first started doing drugs in, um, I was 14, 15. Wow. And um, it progressed and got worse and worse and worse. But um, the major part with me was um, I was in a rehab one time. A lady told me I would never get sober until I identified with what I was going through. And um, one thing that I had did identify with was um, approval addiction. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be part of the crowd. And that was detrimental to me because it had me doing all kind of things that weren't, weren't right, was out of character. But um, I feel good now that I found out that um, it was all the spirit. And I say that lightly, but it's very heavy because it was all the spirit is something that was beating me up and I didn't even know it was there. So, let me, so let's go back a little bit. Okay. okay. You said that what got you in it and kept you in it was a desire for acceptance. Yes. Okay, had you been through any rejection that that made that desire so heightened um, that you would do yes, drugs? I, yes, I did with my brothers. I mean, I'm, I'm the youngest of five kids and um, all of my, my whole family, my mother, dad, everybody was overachievers. And here I come along. I was, it was five year difference in, in age difference to the closest brother, but all my brothers used to ride me on everything. I always felt like I wasn't good enough. Wow. And um, <clears throat> I was good in sports. I played football, basketball, but I wasn't good enough. James, my brother James was a star. My brother Terrence was a star. My brother John was a star. My sister was straight A, so where do I fit in? Well, you know, I came to know you through your brother James mm -hmm. Brown. The world knows James Brown mm -hmm. as JB. a famous uh, sports commentator. Uh, you came to uh, the conference that yes, we sir. had at the church, our men's conference, No More Excuses Men's Conference, and uh, he had you come down for that, and so that's how we first yes. got acquainted. However, mm -hmm. we kind of got acquainted another way through something you heard, was it on the radio? I no. Um, well, how, how did that happen? No, a friend of mine, Faith, okay. Sherry, and um, she really brought you life to me. I mean, you came to life when I met her, and um, she, had, she said she had a message for me. It was talking about breaking the a curse of addiction. And you talked about um, that this whole thing was a spirit and that um, to break that curse, you got to break your spiritual things to break a spiritual curse. A man, I couldn't break it. My, I was 0 for 8. 8 rehabs. Nothing, 8 rehabs. 8 rehabs. Nothing happened. Still coming out, still walking around saying, hi, I'm Everett, I'm an addict. And beat myself up. I went in rehab and planned my relapse before I got out of rehab. That's wow. how bad it was. So the meetings weren't working. None of that stuff was working. But some kind of way, when I listened to your message that day, and I know right now to the day, I've heard that message about 70 times. 7-0? Seven 7-0, zero? Seven zero, but I still listen to it. But it, it, it helps me because you said something about what you do to help somebody, that's, that's how you help you. So the more I help me people, the more I knew, the better I was getting the further away from the, the whole lifestyle was getting me. So I felt better doing that, but um, it's, it was wicked. It was very wicked. Um, my lifestyle was very wicked. And um, I felt like um, you said, you're not God, you're Tony Evans, but you helped me immensely. Well, thank you for reminding me of that. I'm glad that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's only one God, not Yeah, not only he. one God, but <laughs> you helped me immensely because I can, if my wife would tell you, I put earphones in, put on a message and I can pick, play continuously. Next message, next message, next message. And I'll wake up three, four o'clock in the morning and you'll be talking about fasting or the next day you'll be talking about something else. And it'll be being drilled in my brain. But what you drilled into me was that this is all spiritual. It's not natural. We can't beat it up with our fists. We can't do anything with it. Well, that, the, the encouraging part of what you're saying to me now 
is that the word of God works. Oh my God! Because because yes. uh, you were hearing the word of God, we we hadn't met yet. No. And uh, and yet the the word of God coming through through the, I guess it was a CD. Um, no, was um, a, I have your app. Oh, the app was app. on the app. Yes, okay, sir. okay. I have so some, I have a stack of CDs, but mostly the listening at night is on the app. Okay. And so and you know that's I hear you every day. And um, oh, so we hang out daily together. We hang out daily. <laughs> it's amazing how your work can get down in your heart, get down in your spirit. And if you want it, if you accept it, it's, it's coming for you. So what kind of drugs were you doing? I, I basically crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, I was, okay. But I'm gonna tell you something, doctor. Um, crack cocaine, cigarettes for 40 years, I had a very little lifestyle, but my biggest stronghold was, well, two of my biggest was pornography and approval addiction. I wanted people to like me. Okay. So let me ask this question. Yes, sir. You hear the tape, you find out that you start with the spiritual. You know, my big statement is everything visible and physical is preceded by something invisible and spiritual. So if you want to deal with the visible physical, you got to address the invisible spiritual. You said so, yesterday once, you said, uh, you, even though you see what you see, you have yeah. that. It, seen all there is to be seen. Yeah, if all you see is see, what you, you see, see, you do not yeah. see all there is to so be I'm seen. Gonna so gonna miss so. <laughs> you said that twice yesterday. I went to two services and that was wonderful because it's a lot to see, it's a lot that I'm looking for, I'm searching for. I'm turning 61 in a few days and um, I've been under attack for like the last 16 months with my physical health, but you know what? I'm here today. And you're here today. I'm, here today. I'm glad you're here with yeah. us and, and being able to tell your story. So now, you hear the word, you hear that it's spiritual, and as I understand it, this led you to a place to help take you further in your victory. Oh tell gosh. us, tell me about that. It led me to a place, um, hmm. it led me to get down on my knees. I, 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 I'm a high school graduate, could've went to college, but I didn't, I wanted to chase other dreams, but um, I read and write like the normal person in the United States, but uh, I don't like to read. I, I get more from, um, it's an uh, audio visual, mm -hmm. but I see, you know, I get more from that. So um, this led me to a place I'm reading now. Okay. Ah, who knew? Um, I have a book from you, um, No More Excuses. No More Excuses. I've had that book since 2001 when James Brown was with Fox. Okay. He was in California, he had that book there, and I, he said I can have it. Tony Evans. Had the book 10 years, never read it. <laughs> I read it recently, so, but I, I knew it was No More Excuses. That's taking me to another level. I know that's God. Okay. Not me. Now, one of the messages, I mentioned a place, hmm. American oh Keswick. Yes. Tell me about that. Tell me about that America's story. American Keswick was um, like no other place I've ever been. It's right now, it's been there 123 years, helping people with um, drug addictions or, or strongholds, as I put it. And uh, they have a series, they have like, six chaplains there and you get assigned a chaplain but it's out in the woods in New Jersey the Pine Belt and um, no TV we saw one movie a week um, three squares a day you got to do a little, little work there it's not about the work though it's all about they guide you through the Bible slowly but surely they give us scriptures we have to memorize every day and you got to come and quote your scripture before your peers and if you don't have it right these guys will set you back but this place was very very helpful to, to me because it gave me a chance to not read so much but to focus on what God was doing in my life and be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then knowing that I, I they said I wanted to bring Tony Evans. They said no, you, you can't have him. But all you need is your Bible. And that's all they let us have. We did no meetings, no 12 step, none of that. All we did was the Bible. And here's a word that me and Miss Sylvia said this morning, but God. Mm -hmm. But God was there, and um, God came in there like a flood, and he stayed there, and stayed in my heart, and um, wow. America's Catholic was surreal. Well, the reason that I had brought that up, because I had sent some other people there because of their view of the word. a lot of people there. Yeah, and so the, the word, the word was, is so focused on there, they believe the word by itself. So, can produce transformation. God. And so that, I resonated because of my confidence in the written word of God. And so to hear your story that they just... Well, you, 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 you have a story where you're talking about... 
Are you gonna tell me my story now? No, no, you no, 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 you go ahead. No. <laughs> you, where you're talking about um, Lazarus. Lazarus come out. But right. They had to move the stone. They had to move the so stone. So you got to do some work. There you go. So when he said Lazarus come out, he didn't. He called him by name, but he said move the stone. But you said when Lazarus came out, shuffling. And I've heard people get caught up into well, was he tied this way? You didn't get you didn't get caught up in any of that. You got caught up in the. Hey, the word of God brought him out. And right. then you told me it was the last miracle Jesus performed before he was crucified. I didn't know that. So it was the things that you put in little tidbits. If I listen to it over and over again, but you said, but God, when I went to Keswick, they were, I was smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, watching pornography, chasing women up and down the street, married to a beautiful wife, wasn't chasing her, but all that stopped <laughs> in one Instant. Wow. I have not looked back, but God took that away from me. And it was because I believed in what you was saying, and you 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 told it to me, but you also took me in the word and showed me. And once you did that, I, I have nothing to do but believe. So that's what I'm at. That was America's cousin. Well, you know, it, it it is so encouraging to me because sometimes I do wonder. <clears throat> Is the word making a difference? Are people just it listening to sermons? So when I hear live, real stories of people mm -hmm. who've been delivered from something mm -hmm. uh, that that held you hostage for 38, 38 years, years, 38 years, and God on a dime, on a dime. turned it around. I mean, that that is that, that is powerful. Because this is the way they do in Keswick. You come in, they have a test for cigarettes, a test for <laughs> drugs. Okay. And then when you come out from outside, they test you. I went in, I hadn't done drugs for two weeks. I went in and, and tested dirty. And I know I hadn't done anything. But the lady, Miss Russomano, looked at me and said, I believe the test. I said, I know you do. And it was her decision, but she let me in. And I said, you're never going to regret it. And um, God, God was in control from right then on. So if you, were, if you were talking to somebody else who is in the situation you're in or a similar situation, what would you say to them coming out of your own experience? Surrender. Wow. Surrender. I mean, I can't do anything. I'm not in control of nothing. Everything I did, I fell flat on my face. But when I surrendered, hmm, there it is. It's a surrender, man. Surrender. Wow. So God has turned Everything a lot of better. things around, and now you're married to a beautiful, beautiful wife. wife from Brazil. Yes. We have a home in Pikesville, Maryland, <laughs> your whole stopping ground. Yeah. So what do you hope to do with the rest of your life the now that you're in this new journey? Um, on this new journey, I would like to help other people. I mean, the more I help Joe Blow and Sally Joe, and what I found out helping other people, it's all kind of problems. Everybody's got a problem, just not only drugs, it's a lot of other things that the strongholds don't, what's, the, what's a good word? Strongholds don't um, care who you are, where you come from. Mm -hmm. All they do is, all they care about is binding you up. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm learning my thing through kingdom men and the kingdom life, what with the release button, it's a release button somewhere, release button, that I can tell them the right words or show them the right things or watch my walk, watch my walk. And um, to, to put it out there like that. And I was, I, was, I was the guy to hide. I didn't want nobody to see me, but now I don't care. Okay, so you're not fighting for that acceptance anymore. No, no. That was, <laughs> okay. a, that was the biggest thing I had to get rid of. Um, uh, approval addiction, and at one time I was in rehab in Tampa, Florida, one of my eight, and um, the lady, this elderly lady, she was a, a major with the Salvation Army, and she slammed the book on the table and said, until you realize what you're doing, you're gonna always suffer from that addiction. And I didn't like that. You, you can go through life and not know your calling, you can go through life and not know what's wrong with you, you can go through life and not know what's going on, but when you find out, hmm, like a light switch came on. So you've got this new life. Now, you have some health challenges that you're wrestling oh, yes, with sir. now. Tell me about those. Oh, let me start with, um, I have a list. I gave you guys a couple yesterday, but I have a condition called uh, Mothenius Gravis. It deals with the autoimmune deficiency, part of your body, autoimmune system, and it controls the muscles in your body. Everything's controlled. And right now, mine's attacking my eyes. So when I'm not on steroids or another medicine called paradistamine, it, my eyes go cross. I can't see. I was taking my wife down to see the cherry blossoms and couldn't see the lines in the street, so I had to pull over and someone come get me. Next condition would be 
my bladder. CAT scan said, okay, you need to go see a urologist and have a cystoscopy. When they go up in your bladder and look at it, they have to look in, because the bladder, you see the bladder, but it's inside where the problems were. And it looked like cauliflower. And he said there was a tumors that had been growing for years. Mm -hmm. And they cut them out, but under the tumors was a cancer. And it's flats and um, all around the walls of my bladder. Okay, we go from there to, um, and I have to have bladder surgery to deal with that. Go from there to, diabetic, I'm acute diabetic, um, trying to keep my diabetes under control. Um, I take insulin, I take a needle five, six times a day, um, every day just to remain normal. Um, we go from the diabetes to, um, I have um, heart problems. I've had open heart surgery, triple bypass. I have uh, something called uh, AFib right now, which is rapid heartbeat. And that feels like a heart attack, but it's not as boom, 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 boom. And it can kill you because it, it'll create um, blood clots. When I had my open heart surgery, my blood pressure dropped low and I had a stroke. And I had to learn how to walk, talk, just normal function again. Wow. I went from a wheelchair to a walker, from a wheelchair to crutches to a walker, to a cane, and then once this thing started back with my eyes, back to a cane again, but I'm, I'm, I'm free. I, I tell you what, I feel pretty good today. Who knows about tomorrow, but um, I feel pretty good. And that's just a, most few of my conditions, but you know what? I think all oh, this is a spiritual attack from Satan. And um, when I talked to your people, and she said, um, we're gonna bring you down. And uh, would you like to have prayer? Oh yeah, I wanna have prayer. And I'm going yesterday, and I look around, I see 15 guys in black suits coming around me, lay hands on me. Man, I felt free. Wow. I felt good. So that's a little bit about conditions, medical conditions. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's been a joy to to, to begin the process of getting to know you, to hear your story and to hear how God, where he's brought you from. And even though you still have challenges, you well, still you say you're free. So free. That, is a, that is an amazing thing. All these problems and you're free at the same time. Amen, feel free. Yeah, that's great. So we are honored that you spent this time with us and we look forward to, uh, to seeing what God's gonna do next. Because you said, you said two things. You said one, the fact that you minister to other people help deliver you. And now when I ask you, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? You, you said you want to help other people and nothing will make you freer than God using you to be a blessing Amen. while you're waiting for a blessing Amen. or experiencing a thank blessing. You. So thank you for allowing us to be part of your life and thank you for allowing God's word to, to infiltrate your life because when people hear your story, they will see hope for their story. Amen. And if, if your story gives hope for their story, you will have ministered to other people. So thank you. Thank you.